All right, 935. Welcome, everybody, to uh, lab number four. My name is Nick Calum, and uh, I'm the children's pastor at a church in Tacoma called Life Center. Um, and uh, been there for 13 years. Uh, I guess 15 if you count the time that I was uh, interning there as well. So it's been a little while. D this last summer I did a wedding for a young lady who was a child when I started. And she's m it's just weird. It's just... Yeah, I don't, yeah, <laughs> don't want to think about that. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. Uh, good. Well, uh, this, um, this session is titled Developing Nearsightedness. How many of you uh, wear glasses or contacts of some kind? How many of you have the same affliction as I do that you see better in the distance than you do up close? Any, any uh, farsighted people? Okay, so anybody nearsighted? You see better closer than you do in the distance. Well, all right, the nearsighted people... That's funny. Like it's like more than like eighty percent of the room. So you pick the nearsighted <laughs> class. It says developing nearsightedness, not you already have developed nearsightedness. Uh, but I'm using this idea <coughs> about di uh, sightedness to help us remember that uh, our role is a a bifocal role in children's ministry. Let me get my notes out and we'll get started. Uh, so thanks for coming today. See, I the way I, I, I sat, I didn't sit, I stood on our stage at our church once, probably within a couple years of um, starting there. Um, on a Sunday night, I, my, our pastor asked the children's pastor, myself, to, to go up there and deliver a sermon, right? So I was nervous, and I worked hard on just what I wanted to say. And I stood up there and I said, our kids are important because they're our future. And people were like, yeah, yeah. And I was ringing that bell really loud. And, and I started to make sure that everybody knew how important children's ministry was. Because, man, if we don't do a good job now, our future is going to be even more messed up than what our current reality is. And... Um, I think that's a vision problem. I think I know my heart has totally changed because I don't necessarily just see our kids as the future any longer. And uh, so it, we have some vision problems that, um, that come up. Our world, we just, we see our world now and we, and we just, we see it as it is now and it's, we just simply see that our world needs to be fixed. It needs fixing. We simply see the problems and we have a clear picture of what it looks like without those problems. And we, we think about, oh, just in the future, if, if that wasn't there, our world would be better. We get these grand ideas about what the future would look like if it didn't have this in it. Um, we've also kind of bought into this idea and clouds our vision uh, that it's the adults that are the difference makers. That um, for some reason we, you know, or you, you think of it this way, o often our pastors might put pressure on the children's ministry to be excellent so that the parents will, could bring back their kids. It's like the reason to have a good children's ministry is so that we can also get the parents. It's like we're going to use this tool of children's ministry so that we can actually do the real work of ministering to the parents. Wait a second. Does that, does not, that's, that doesn't jive with me. That doesn't, something about that doesn't seem right. That... Excellence in children's ministry is what we need to do because we got to have those parents who are going to tithe and pay the bills. Because really, the, the adults are the ones who are going to make a difference in the world anyway. I see some, some, some nodding hands like, yeah, I see where you're going with this. And I see some shaking heads like, oh, I exactly get it. Um, adults will pay the bills. Adults are the difference makers. Um, that's a vision problem that I see. Um, we have a vision problem that children are the future, exclamation point. Like I've said, I, I stood on that stage once, and I declared it and got applause because of that statement. Um, 
I, I, I drove by a school once uh, around our town, and um, it, was about a, it was a time when my heart was beginning to change, and I was starting to develop some different-sidedness. The, the ro- drove by the school, and you know they have the, uh, the reader boards, you put the letters up, and you spell something, and it says, school, four walls with a future inside. And I kind of like wanted to drive my car into that sign and knock it down. It was like, no, this isn't right. This isn't, that's not the case. We don't want our, um, we don't want the kids to be seen as only the future. We don't want our church to grow old and die and, uh, and we close, have to close the door. So we had better have an amazing children's ministry to help keep us going for the long haul. That's a vision problem. Um, I think sometimes children's leaders, as parents, we ask this question because we have a vision problem. We ask the question of, what do you, we ask it to a child, what do you want to be when you grow up? That implies there's a period of time when you are not something, and eventually you will be something. And you get to decide what that, what that is. What do you want to be when you grow up? I think it's a question that points out a very big vision problem. Um, anybody sat through a high school graduation before? <laughs> Maybe your own? Um, 98% of the commencement speakers would probably stand in front of the graduating class and say, great job, you've graduated the 12th grade. You're done with school now, now go change your world. Now is your time. Go, go, go. It's, you've, you've done all this remedial work, and now you get to go do something that's going to make a difference. That's a vision problem. Big vision problem. Um, any parents in the room? So we got, we got lots of hands there. Um, well, before I get to that, that part, actually, I want um, to – we have a school that's associated with our church. And uh, I, ro- I drove, by, or drove by, I walked by one of the hallways there and had all these little crafts up. And the question was that same thing, what do you want to be when you grow up? And all these kids had done their little drawings and, you know, clippings of newspapers of all these things that, that uh, we were saying, hey, when you get to be this adult sized, you can be something. One of them, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it was, well, one of the kids had put a police officer, but it said, parole officer (laughs) like maybe that kid's parent is a parole officer or maybe it was just a misunderstanding but um yeah there's that i we we get stuck in that idea and this vision problem that uh, and we and we encourage kids to begin to think about the future let's make it let's make it into a craft even we got these kindergarten crafts that are cute and the parents are going to keep forever maybe even put it on the refrigerator door and um and we celebrate that but we are implying a very big issue, um, a very big vision problem. Um, parents, uh, we even use the term, you're raising your children. We're, we're raising them to a level. We have, the, I, I kind of think about it um, li- like in, the, in this way, parents raise children to be a positive, to bo- to be positive people in society when they're teens and beyond, because none of us want to have raised that teenager, you know, that young adult. So we're raising them to a point that we have in mind, right? We're, we're, we're bringing them up to this point because we have this picture of what we want them to be when they're older, and we're, br- we're trying to raise them up to that point. And we'll get to the some of these solutions here in just a second. Uh, in a way, we're raising our kids to avoid being the, the bad picture. It's quite honestly, we are farsighted. Our churches, our society, our culture, we are so farsighted. We have a better vision, a better picture of what our, um, for the future, of what our world and our kids would be. And we have a blurry vision a blurry picture of what our kids can be and are right now. Let's use the analogy again. If I take off my glasses, 
I'm going to have a harder time seeing what's right here on my paper. But I can see that clock pretty well. I have a better picture. I can see better the, what's going on back th uh, up there than I can see what's right here in front of me. When we have children in our families and our churches, we get this idea and we've bought into this idea that um, we need to have a really good picture of what they're going to be one day. And I'm going to work towards that. And we've lost the vision then, and we haven't taken the time to develop, okay, what are they right now? Well, I want to help us develop some nearsightedness so that the picture of who they are right now is really, really clear. So we've got to put on some corrective lenses. These are just reading glasses that I, that I wear, um, but they're, they're correcting my vision. What can we do to, to develop better vision for our, who our kids right now? We have to, and this is the first one, uh, realize their impact. Though smaller in scale is just as impactful. We hear stories about um, an adult who you know, runs their business so that the, all the employees are working towards something and it's a Christian business owner and he 